How's it going, guys? Past level question, gastro step one, internal medicine, pediatrics, 2CK, nine-year-old girl, no past, no past medical history, periodic diarrhea, hemoglobin normal, 14 grams per deciliter, should be 13 to 17.5, non-menstruating females and males, 12 to 17.5, menstruating females, MTV normal, 85, should be 80 to 100, desilose test is normal, I'll talk about this and move to the clip, duodenal biopsy is shown, which is the final most likely explanation for the patient's presentation, choice A, disaccharide deficiency, correct answer, okay, lactose intolerance, lactase deficiency, Lactase locate at the brush border, tips of the villi, and that's going to break down lactose into a molecule of glucose and galactose. The latter two will be absorbed. You need to know that you have a normal small bowel biopsy in lactose intolerance. Okay, so in contrast, celiac disease, you're going to have flattening of the intestinal villi. And as far as the cause of the lactose intolerance here, it can be idiopathic, there can be a familial association. It can also be caused by recent gastroenteritis, rotavirus in young kids, especially the unvaccinated, noroc virus in older kids and in adults, where we get transient slothing, slothing of the intestinal villi leading to that secondary lactose intolerance. So you're also going to have normal hematologic findings in lactose intolerance. Now, as far as the uh, relevance to the D-xylose test. D-xylose is a monosaccharide that does not require any enzyme for absorption. Insofar as we have normal small bowel architecture, we will have adequate absorption, normal absorption of D-xylose. So hence, it can be detected in the blood without a problem. In contrast, in celiac disease, or a flattening of the intestinal villi, clearly that's abnormal small bowel architecture. Hence, our D-xylose test will be abnormal. It won't be detected in the blood the way it should be. So celiac disease for an abnormal D-xylose test, Crohn's disease, mouth to anus, if we have significant small bowel involvement, we can also have an abnormal D-xylose test, but lactose intolerance, a normal D-xylose test. Also for a normal desilose test would be choice B, exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, wrong fucking answer, which in pediatrics could refer to cystic fibrosis, which there's no past medical history here. If she had CF, clearly there'd be some sort of mention of uh, pulmonary infections or even things like fat soluble vitamin deficiency. They like rickets, of course, and also vitamin E deficiency for uh, cystic fibrosis all over the biochemistry stuff for US Millie. In adults, exocrine pancreas insufficiency could refer to chronic pancreatitis in alcoholics. That's essentially cirrhosis, but of the pancreas, pancreatic burnout. So you have normal slash low pancreatic enzymes. Amylase lipase are not elevated, and you'd have decreased lipases, proteases coming from the exocrine pancreas. So you get steatorrhea and also increased muscle fiber in the stool. Can also be pancreatectomy. Can also be long-standing diabetes. Choice B, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, insensitivity to gliadin, wrong fucking answer. So clearly it's not celiac disease because we would see flattening of the intestinal villi, not a normal biopsy. And so even without this image here, we know it's not celiac because as it is inculcated, we would have an abnormal d test. And US Assembly loves giving you microcytic anemia for celiac disease. It's one of the highest yield points you should know. I talked about my PDFs, I made prior clips on this, that... Most iron is absorbed in the duodenum, and flattening the intestinal villi leads to microcytic anemia. So if they give you a big paragraph, very vague, as far as what the diagnosis is, you're like, I don't know, is this lactose intolerance, is this celiac disease? I'm not sure. But they say somewhere in the paragraph that MCV is low or hemoglobin's low, you know right away it's celiac disease. Choice C, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, milk protein allergy, wrong fucking answer. So... It's a difficult uh, diagnosis. This is very much pediatrics 2CK, non-existent on step one. What they want for 2CK is that the biggest risk factor for the development of this is going to be not being exclusively breastfed within the first six months of life. Okay, so what they'll do is tell you uh, an infant is four months old, has blood in the stool, and was switched to bottle feeding, was switched to formula few weeks ago or a couple months ago. Okay, so they can give you various time frames, but they'll mention that there was initiation of formula prior to six months of age, that the kid was not exclusively breastfed, and for whatever fucking reason, it causes blood in the stool. And as the treatment for this, they want switch to hydrolyzed casein or cassian formula. Okay, switching to a soy protein or soy-based formula is the wrong fucking answer. And sometimes 
they will just tell you straight up that the kid was started on a soy protein form or soy uh, based formula and switching to a cow milk formula is also the wrong fucking answer. Choice D, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, PS pause and macrophages, lamb and appropriate, wrong fucking answer. It refers to Whipple disease, trophrima, whiplay, causes an obscure condition, bacterial infection of the bowel, where if they happen to mention it on US simile, if it shows up in 100% of questions, they'll mention PS positive macrophages and the lamb and appropriate, okay? It's a malabsorptive condition, and it can lead to other systemic findings, such as arthritis, renal, and cardiac disease. Choice E, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. I feel like my stuff's my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.